What the hell is that? One of the world's wildest two strokes. That's what that thing is. And we're on the hunt for it today. As you can see, I've got my Indiana Jones inspired hat on, because yet again, we're searching for a treasure of the motorcycle world. This time, our adventure takes place surprisingly close to home. I'm so excited to see this beast with my own eyes. As you guys might know, we absolutely love our two strokes here on the channel, and the more bonkers, the better. We found some awesome machines in the past, but the bike we have in store for you today will take some beating. We're in um, motorcycle heaven right now. It doesn't rain in heaven, it, it rains outside as you can hear. Um, let's take a walk down here and I'm gonna see the bike that we've got in store for you today, the bike that we're featuring today for the first time. I've not seen it yet. This is my genuine first reaction. Let's go and have a look. So there's the beast. That's ridiculous, isn't it? I'm go for it. <laughs> Bloody hell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 24. That's a lot of spark plugs. So when we talk about bonkers two strokes, this is the holy grail. This is a world record holding motorcycle. But before I tell you what record it actually holds, let me tell you a little bit more about this bike and the backstory behind it. This is the White Lock Tinker Toy, named after the B-17 Flying Fortress from World War II, and I think you can see why. This monster is a 48 cylinder two stroke motorcycle. Yeah, 48 cylinders. That's a lot of spark plugs for a two wheeled machine. It was built by a man called Simon Whitelock, who's a, a crazy bike builder that's been whipping up wild inventions since the 1980s. But I think this thing, the Tinker Toy, has to be his crowning achievement. I'm gonna jump off and we'll do a walk around. I'll go through some of the features and try to explain to you guys how on earth Simon pulled this off. So Simon Whitelock was a big fan of Kawasaki's KH250 triple two-stroke motor from back in the day. He built a fair few machines using that motor as a base, each getting more and more ridiculous. But like I said earlier, the Tinker Toy definitely has to be his crowning achievement. And again, we see a whole load of KH250 triple cylinders here, arranged in six blocks of eight. So obviously the exhaust system had to be custom made. You're not picking something like this off of the shelf. It's a 24 into one system with a conventional four stroke end cans and a very nice little touch from Simon here, uh, the, the number plate, a 48 cylinder. We like that. So the tank here up the top looks like an extended KH250 tank because that is actually what it is, but it's not quite what it seems. There's no tank under here. This just serves as a cover for the, the electricals and the ignition down there. So obviously a lot of this bike is ridiculous, but the throttle is just insane. Look at the size of that monster. You're gonna need some strong forearms to operate that. So the cable goes down here into a custom made splitter, which splits the throttle cable going to each of the six carbs down there. The wiring loom was self-made by Simon. The alternator he grabbed from a car, the gearbox is from a BMW K100, as are the foot pegs. The wheels are obviously as heavy duty as possible to deal with all of the weight here, with the heaviest duty spokes possible as well. The wheels were made by Hagon. Uh, the front hub here is actually from a, a Honda Goldwing. The whole front end actually is pretty much a Honda Goldwing. So you've got the brakes and calipers, the discs, the hub, the forks, that's all from the Honda Goldwing. And as you can see up here on the forks, they've added these extra springs here, again, to try and deal with the weight of this machine. It's a big, heavy lump. 
So I said most of the front is from the Goldwing, but the clocks here are actually from the Kawasaki KH250, which uh, gels very nicely and matches with the tank, which is also from the KH250. So the tailpiece here is also from the KH250, slightly modified to fit, but you can see Simon worked very hard to keep the bike looking as natural as possible. It is like limousine length, but with the clocks, the tank and the tailpiece all coming from the same bike, it does look pretty natural. So the rest of the rear end is pretty much custom made, as is the, the chassis, the frame for the front end as well, obviously to fit that into a motorcycle that had to be custom made. Um, underneath here, a very interesting feature. So I said it was a 48 cylinder bike. In reality, it's a 49 cylinder bike because you've got this little 125 two stroke motor here. This is the donkey engine. It acts as the starter motor to fire the rest of the machine into life make that job a little bit easier. So this tiny carb down here is actually what makes this whole thing work. There's an exhaust pipe here with no silencer on the end from this 125 motor. So it's very loud, but once the rest of the bike fires up, you turn that off, she's running lovely. So we just talked about the donkey motor at the back. This is the starting procedure as I know it. You flick this switch here, which is the ignition for that donkey motor at the back. You hit the red button, fires that starter motor into life then you use this thumb throttle to rev up the rest of the motors then you should be good to go you can flick that ignition switch off for the donkey motor and then try and use this throttle and get moving so it took simon about five years to complete this build and it was finished in 2003 and it's been turning heads ever since overall it weighs about 600 kilograms or 1300 pounds Simon says it wasn't built for speed or power, but simply just to break that world record. But he guesses it will do about 130 miles per hour. It's got a total displacement of 4.2 litres, so it's a 4,200cc machine. And in theory, if all of those cylinders provided the original 32 brake horsepower that the KH250 had, then this machine would be boasting 512 brake horsepower. So, Strictly in theory, this thing would beat a Bugatti Chiron in the power to weight ratio department. By my calculations, the Bugatti is packing about 751 bhp per tonne, whereas this thing is packing about 853 bhp per tonne. And it's road legal. And the reason we're filming with this thing today is because it's actually for sale. How much you ask? Well, we're about to talk to a man that might have the answers. So how much would a bike like this set you back? Let's find out. So we're at Bonhams today and this is Andy, our uh, gracious host and the man that will be uh, selling this bike in a few weeks time. But before we get to talking about the sales, Andy, Obviously you get a lot of cool things come through the doors here, but have you ever had anything that looks quite like this? No. At Bonhams? Nothing like this. This is a one-off that I just couldn't say no to it. Yeah. Yeah, it came through in my emails and I, just, I had to take it in straight away. It's such a cool thing. It's such an eye-opening thing. We have so much cool stuff in our warehouse that as soon as people walk in here, they go straight to this, yeah. which I've never had before. Yeah, I suppose the same thing happened to you, the same thing happened to us when you saw a picture of this, you're like, I need to know more about yeah. this thing. It's like, what the hell is this thing? Yeah. And it's such a cool creation that the guy's a genius for doing it. You are selling it for the, the man that built yeah, it, right? Yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah, it's all for him. Um, he's owned it and he built it from, two, from 1998 to 2003 when he finally completed it. And he's had it ever since. And um, yeah, we're so excited to have it. It's such a unique and we have no idea what it's going to do. Like, yeah. It's such an unknown, but yeah. it's so it's like exciting about exhaustion. So you just you have no idea. Yeah, so you say you don't really have an idea, but what is the rough estimate you rough think? Rough estimate is 40 to 60,000 pounds. Um, which sounds a lot, a lot for a bike, but it, there's a lot of bike here. Yeah, if you've got 40 friends, it's only a thousand pounds each, a lot better in cryptocurrency. So it's such a cool thing to have. If you've got a, a, a club or a museum or just an office or anything, like you just want to have it there because it's such yeah. a talking piece. It kind of brings you into it. So you want to own it. It's just the more you look at it, it is a good looking bike as well. He's put a lot of thought into this and you know, you just want to own it because why the hell not? Yeah. So tell us about what the auction, where it, when it is, where it is. It's taking place at Stafford. So part of our spring Stafford auction, we've been there for like over 30 years now. So it's one of the lots there. It's on the 21st of April. It's a two day auction, 20th and 21st of April. This will be on the 21st, a Sunday. 
um, it's one of our star lots. It's just, you know, we've got Vincent's in the sale of Black Lightning, which is one of only 34, but we took this at MCM last weekend and it actually got the most attention out of the whole thing. You know, we had the Bruffs and Vincent's and this was the start of our show. If people can bid online, can they? They can bid online, they can bid in person, they can bid absentees. You know, if you can put a link in your bio, then, yep. you know, you can see everything we do. It's really easy, it's very straightforward. They'll come, come talk to me, I can look after them. And we're just excited to offer it and we can hopefully get to a new home. Yeah, so we'll have a link in our description down below. We can learn more about the bike and the auction. Andy, thanks for having us in today. No Thank you very what much. an awesome machine. Now back to that Guinness World Record. Uh, I hope you put your guesses in the comments down below. I'll enjoy reading through those. This machine holds the world record for being the land vehicle with the most cylinders. What an absolutely bonkers machine. I'm so glad we found it. I wonder what it sounds like, and I wonder what it rides like. Let's find out. We'll hear the bike come to life very soon, but first, let's talk to the man that built this beast. Can you explain how it actually works? First of all, I give a lot of credit to a guy called Chris Appleby. Um, at one point, he, he might still hold, or he held a, um, a water speed record. And he was big into two strokes, but he'd grind, um, he'd grind cranks, he'd do all sorts of stuff. And he was a brilliant guy. He did most of the heavy engineering on the bike. Now, because I'm a, I'm a building surveyor and I built office blocks. Um, and I, you know, I had a little lathe and bits and bobs, but he was the, he was the heavy lifter behind the bike. What you're looking at is six straight eights. And each straight eight is two and one third of a kh250 crankcase because all the cranks you just press them together so you can keep pressing them together as long as you want which is how the seven cylinder came about so it's six straight eights uh at the back end all geared together and they all then run down to a and it was just a guess at the time but it actually worked a bmw k1000 gearbox yep and that came out the back end and just had to turn the right way, uh, which, which was a little bit of luck rather than anything else. Each straight eight is its own carburetor, own inlet, own exhaust, and um, own uh, luminescent ignition system. Building the bike, it took five years, but I did 80% of the work in the last year. And it was frankly, um, hard work, put it that way. Just explain to us what you felt like when you started the Tinker Toy for the first time. But when it fired up with no exhaust pipes on it, the, the, you could just hear over the video, Chris Apple saying, Merlin, mm. or Lancaster, because Lancaster, mm. And it did sound like that. And I actually flew in a Lancaster a couple of years back. And I can guarantee it's as bad as uh, a similar. Why, why did you start the project? When I was at school, I was in, um, for some reason, my friend had a go-kart in his back garden thrown in the corner. It, was, had a, it had his Kawasaki triple engine. So I was big into Kawasaki triples, loved them, used to commute on one. When I first started going to the triples rally in Nottingham that Rick Brett used to set up, and they were great fun, great fun. Can't have that sort of fun these days. And a few guys would turn up with, you know, modified bikes, standard bikes, but with different bits on them. And that quite sort of got me interested. 89, I built the first four cylinder Kawasaki. I just the way my mind works. Yeah. So you know, obviously know of Alan, Alan Milnyard. Yeah. The most talented motorcycle builder ever. Way more talented than me, but that's another story. He started building four cylinders much later on, then he did some fives. So I almost built the 48 cylinder to put an end to the how many cylinders race. Yeah, you do yeah, yeah. In a way, that's sort of way of looking at it. I just got into building, multi, I have a thing about multi cylinder engines. And then I got very interested if you go, to, if you're into big air, um, aero engines from the Second World War which is all about the number of cylinders and the, 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 which is why you'll find the bikes called Tinker Toy. Yeah, where does where does the fuel actually go? Okay, so 
the way I build most, used to build most stuff, is so you make it up as you go along. And I got to the point, I thought, why the fuck am I going to put a fuel tank? Because the fuel tank's not the fuel tank. Yeah, yeah. So if you think um, top two, middle two, bottom two, rows of eight, between the middle and bottom two, there's a 150 mil stainless steel pipe welded up at both ends that slots in between all the cylinder banks. So the fuel tank's underneath. And it's one thing you just won't see, you won't understand, you won't appreciate, but it was one of the, um, not the hardest things to do, because you've only got a fuel pump on it. Yeah. But it's, nobody's asked that question, where's the fuel tank? Aperture Superbikes. Contact. I would absolutely love to take this bike for a ride and I'd love even more to see our tame test rider Sean Smith try and take it for a ride too. I think he might struggle doing that but it might be out of our budget or it definitely is out of our budget unless unless this video goes super mega Mr Beast viral then it might be possible. So if you want to see the world's wildest two-stroke lights up be sure to like this video, leave some comments down below and share it around with all of your friends. If you do that, then the impossible might be made possible. Who knows? As always guys, you've been watching 999 Laser. My name's Max, until next time, I'll see you at the track.